All right, today we're going to go over flex fuel. This is more of an advanced flex fuel. This is kind of the way I do uh, flex fuel. If you don't know what flex fuel is, it means um, you've got an ethanol content sensor that's reading uh, either pump gas or E85 or a blend between the two. So the first thing we got to look at is uh, a flex fuel sensor. So um, this is uh, what we use here. We use a Motion Raceworks uh, dual channel flex sensor. Um, this gets a uh, this gets mounted on the feed line, uh, not the return. Well, that's what we, we do. You can mount it on either or, but I always do it on the feed line just because it has a bypass in it. So fuel can come in, go through the flex sensor and around the flex sensor. So it doesn't um, inhibit flow uh, on your feed side. So I like to use it on the feed side, um, but you can use it on the return side. So this works great. It's nice and compact. And then you need a sensor. This doesn't come with a sensor. So uh, the sensor that uh, I use is this AC Delco uh, part number. So I grab it off of Amazon. Rock Auto might be a little cheaper, but this I just use this because it was easy to find, and most people will go to Amazon, unfortunately. So you've got your flex sensor all mounted up in there. And um, so the first thing that I'll say is that with a new car, I always get them uh, up and running on gasoline. Okay, so just 93, you know, from the pump or whatever. So... We're going to leave fuel type as gasoline, and let's just assume that, uh, or I'm going to assume that you have already got your VE table or your fuel table dialed in. So this is being shown in volumetric efficiency. That's a whole other debate. If you tune in VE, great, you'll understand this. If you tune in pounds per hour, uh, there's some takeaways for it. So, But in VE, this is how we do it. So we're in fuel. Here's our VE table. Um, this is uh, out of my own car, the scaling is goofy because um, basically I don't want this thing to make you know more than eight pounds of boost and I mean I can show you here like I kill timing to zero at eight pounds of boost eight pounds of boost with my combination with a twin turbo big block uh, makes a lot of power so I don't want it to make anything like I just I don't want it to make eight pounds of boost period so uh, for when we're driving around town so some of you guys obviously your scaling is going to be here and here and again like scaling's dead at 5500 because I don't want to rev it. This is strictly for my application for street driving. So disregard the scaling uh, and disregard the VE table. Uh, but it has a lot of resolution down here through through idle, vacuum, and driving around town. That's what was uh, the focus of this was for me. Um, so now um, we, we're going to assume that you've got a VE table dialed in. So the way this works is... Your target air fuel ratio table here, right? Your scaling should match, obviously. This is the target air fuel while it's on gasoline, okay? So if you just multiply the volume of fuel uh, and you have closed loop set up, closed loop could uh, potentially, if you're off on your targets, it'll potentially wind up removing or adding fuel uh based off of what your target is. So we have to do a few different advanced tables to really nail down flex fuel. So Go to your advanced ICF. Uh, if you don't know, have the advanced ICF, you go toolbox, add individual config, advanced, and then just default, right? So, oh, I didn't show sensor setup. Let me show you that quick. Inputs, outputs, um, and then let's find... Mm -mm -mm. There you go, flex fuel pump, configure, and it's just a GM flex fuel sensor, 0 to 100%. So, and then that's pin mapped accordingly. Um, where is it? I have too much stuff. Right there. So it's just dropped on that pin. It's wired to that pin. Yada, yada. You should know that. If you don't know that, I made other videos on how to pin map stuff and how to, you know, wire stuff up. So watch those. So anyway, um, we have our advanced ICF and we do a couple different tables, right? So we go to 1D tables. The first one that I build is a flex fuel multiplier. So what this is, is a VE based flex fuel flow offset. Okay. The X axis is flex fuel sensor, which is, I called it flex fuel pump, but uh, it's the flex fuel sensor. Okay. The enable is this table will activate when flex fuel pump is above 5%. Um, if the sensor for some reason dies or whatever, I just don't want it. You know, I, I shut this off and the car run like total crap. So um, anyway, we have our x-axis down here of 0 to 100 percent, right? So what this is, is this is content. This is ethanol content. So ideally, you're going to be somewhere in the E85 range, somewhere around here, okay? Um, 
and then um, you know up here if you had 100 percent it's going to add 27 percent to your ve table now this this is really where you wind up doing a little bit of your tweaking so we're assuming that your ve table right here is already dialed in for your combination and the car runs great on gasoline okay so once you have that nailed down and it runs good on gasoline, you your only real tune-up changes that you have to make are in here, is in, is in your, uh, your, your flex fuel multiplier, right? So if it runs great on gasoline, um, and then you wind up having 75% ethanol, and it's missing its target by a lot, its target natural air fuel are off by a lot, you may want to tweak this value here, right? So um, you'll move this scale. So what I do is I just make it linear. Uh, once we get... Um, once we get up to the 50-ish, 55%-ish uh, um, uh, ethanol content, um, you know, is where you really have to start really tinkering with this stuff. But I just make it linear from 20% from content on up. So what this does is it multiplies, uh, so it says right here, 0% is a neutral value that does not modify VE. A positive value adds to VE. So right there is a 20% addition to VE. So at 80% content, it's adding 20%. If we come over here and we look at, let's just say an idle area, right? Uh, like this. Okay, there's our idle cell. Uh, we have 36% VE. At 36% VE plus 20, we're at 56% VE. Okay? Um, so that is our first table, flex fuel multiplier. So that's going to be just adding fuel. Okay? Our second table, let's go back to that. We'll go to that in a, in a minute. Then let's go to our, our table eight, which is our second table. This is our cranking multiplier. So cranking fuel multiplier. So if you need more fuel on, on E85 to idle and cruise and whatnot, you obviously need more fuel to crank the car, okay? So what this is doing is it's offsetting this right here, startup enrichment. This is our startup values, okay? So this is how much cranking fuel is being applied Um you know, so just while you're cranking the motor over, okay? Now, if it needs this much fuel to crank, you know, let's say, if it needs, at 100 degrees, if it needs 25 pounds of fuel to crank uh, on pump gas, it's going to need more when it's on ethanol. So what we're doing here is that when we get to 80%, I've got 50% increase, okay? So, um, so what that does is our value, this is 50%, our value Right here at 100 degrees is roughly 25 pounds. So now this value is going to be 37 and a half pounds. Okay. So it's modifying these values here. All right. So, and that's another one that you're going to kind of have to play with. This is really just my generic starting point, right? It's like, the, and it seems to work pretty well on most cars. Um, so I just go to 50% uh, increase by, uh, by 80% uh, flex. So, that's the uh, that's the next thing. That's the next thing that you want to do. So um, this is all before you fired the car up, obviously, right? You're setting this up before you fire the car up. So that's your crank multiplier. So we've covered our flex fuel multiplier, all right, VE based fuel flow offset, and our crank multiplier. Now what we need to do is look at our target air fuel ratio offset. So let's go to 2D tables, table four. It's AFR flex offset. So the way this works is we have it's a 2d table and you could do this in 1d but i find a, I, I find a, like a little bit more resolution especially if the car's you know boosted uh, which it probably is once it gets up into boost i like to have a little bit more uh offset i like to run them a little bit richer so our x-axis well first our table type is a target air fuel ratio offset okay what that does is i'm just going to split screen this so that you can so it's easy to see so what that does is it takes, this is our target air fuel ratio table, okay? If our flex percentage is at, let's just use, um, let's just use this right here, 80%, right? If our flex percentage is at 80%, right? So we have 80% ethanol in our fuel in our fuel tank going through our content sensor. And we're at, you know, 4.6 or 4.8 inches of vacuum here, right? What it's doing is it's modifying that target air fuel to go from 13.44 to 13.04, okay? So, or whoops, minus 4, here we go. Um, there we go, minus 4.8. Here, we're somewhere right around here. So it's going to lean, it's going to richen it up. It's going to lower that number and richen it up, right? So we're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 13.9, right? 
So our target air fuel is going to be 13.9 instead of these values. So with this table, the, the idea here is, is that, one, it needs more fuel just to run. Okay, like just to run, it needs more fuel. So it's because it's going to, because ethanol. So ethanol just needs more fuel. There's scientific reasons why I don't feel like getting into them, but it just needs more fuel. Um, the uh, the other thing about it is is that they run better when they're richer on E85. Okay, so wh what I like to do is I use this target air fuel ratio offset table to just richen it up so that when we're in pump gas, it goes back to the VE table that was nice and happy. When it's on uh, ethanol, um, it, it, it starts to blend and makes modifications. Now, obviously, look, it's not making any modifications when it's down here at 27%, right? Most of your pump 93 is going to be somewhere about 15, 18% um, or anywhere between 10 and 20% really uh, ethanol content, right? So, uh, once we get up to 27% ethanol, when we start to, or over 27% ethanol, we start to make modifications, right, for our target. So our target air fuel is is uh, continuing to get richer and richer and richer as we go up in flex percentage. So what this does is it modifies this. Now I'm here to tell you that do not copy and paste these values that you see here into your tables and then contact me and say, I don't know what happened, it doesn't run good. This is a case-by-case -case basis, okay? So again, the scaling that's in here for this, this table is based around my own car driving around with a 540-inch big block Chevrolet and twin 88s in a 3,200 pound car that pulls up mini trailer. Uh, so I've, I've got a lot of time into this working the way it works for my car. Is this going to be right for your car? Probably not, okay? But again, the assumption was at the beginning of this video that this VE table and this target air fuel table was dialed in for pump gas. So if it's dialed in for pump gas, then um, we can then uh, then we can modify it so that it runs well for uh, for ethanol. Okay. So if you want to uh, start off richer, you just make more of a deduction from target, right? So here's an easy one, minus uh, 0.9, right? So if we are at eight pounds of boost and 100% ethanol content, we're going to be down here into the uh, the 10.5 range, okay? So up here, we're going to be a 10.5 target. What that'll do when you tune in VE is it'll take what your target is versus what your VE table reads, right? Whatever your value is for VE. And that's how it comes up with a uh, fuel flow number. Once it has a fuel flow number, um, it well, first it takes the, your, your volumetric efficiency versus your target air fuel. Then it has a fuel flow number. Then it'll look at this table here and it'll multiply it, right? That value. Then it'll look at this table here. Whoops, this one here, and it'll it'll lower it even more, which will increase fuel flow again. So, what we're doing is we're just adding fuel based off of flex, um, and we are uh, and we're adding uh, or, or we're we're richening it up, right? So we're removing you know air fuel ratio value, which is richening it up, right? So we're lowering that number to richen it up. So. That's what we would do for fueling when it comes to flex. Now, the next thing that I do, and this is, it's pretty basic, but uh, but it works well, um, is a timing offset, okay? So this is the timing table. And again, this is a 23 degree or 24 degree big block Chevrolet with old sloppy chambers and you know, whatever. So this is not, don't take these values and shove them into your LS. Um, so this is, this is a uh, this is the timing table that's in the motor for when we're on uh, pump pump gas and uh, and then this modifies that timing value based off of flex percentage right so we're adding timing in it with the 85. Now this again is assuming that you have your car tuned well on 93 octane gasoline. Okay, if it runs good on 93 octane gasoline, as far as the timing table and all your fuel, like this volumetric efficiency table, your target air fuel ratio table, all of that, it will, um, 
uh, this will just modify those values that have already ran well. Why do we need a little bit more timing? Well, we've increased fuel flow. It could use a couple more degrees. They run better with a couple more degrees than I'm in an E85 as opposed to 93. If you look at this timing table, 26 degrees at vacuum at zero vac in a big block Chevrolet is a turd, and it's a turd for a reason. Okay, I don't care if this thing is fast because like on 93, I don't care. I don't want it to be fast. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Um, so all I'm doing is just throwing an extra couple degrees in it to help it when we're down here in the cruise area, okay? So when the car is, you know, cruising around town, it's just modifying these values here um, and just shoving an extra three degrees. And this is something you don't have to do, but I think you'll find that you'll want to do it eventually. So uh, dial in the fuel first and then throw a couple more degrees in it based off of, uh, off of V85 content, as long as you're basing this off of gasoline, like it ran good on gasoline. So... Um, it's a few tables to go through. It's a little bit of a hassle, but, um, but when it's all ironed out, you can literally just fill it up at the pump with 93, fill it up with the pump at E85, mix them, doesn't matter. Car runs good the whole way. So, um, what I will say is that on E85, the car will run better, right? It just runs better because it's higher fuel flow volume. So they just, they're snappier. They respond better. They rev faster, the whole nine yards. So, um, Hopefully this answered some questions for y'all. Uh, I see a lot of people are going to flex. A lot of people are going to methanol. Uh, I've done some other videos on methanol fuel, um, but this one I, I feel like could be rather beneficial to a large group of y'all. So um, let me know what you think. See you.